Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to walk through installing and setting up the Xbox 360 emulator, Xenia. This is a pretty simple emulator to install and run, but it's a bit less straightforward to configure than most of the popular emulators out there. This guide is going to cover the key settings that you may want to configure to get the best performance out of Xenia, as well as how to manage your Xenia directory. If you want to learn a little bit more about Xenia before you jump in, you'll find a link in the description to my video covering the current state of this emulator. Also be sure to subscribe and join my Discord channel if you want to see tutorials like this, emulator updates, and more. Now before we get too far, I do want to give you a heads up that there is currently a bug that causes Xenia to crash frequently with Nvidia graphics cards. Hopefully we'll see a fix for this in the near future, but right now this emulator is most stable with AMD GPUs with ROV turned off in the config file. It's also worth mentioning that this emulator is pre-configured to work with Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers. If you use a different type of controller, you'll need to use a program like X360 CE or DS for Windows to map your controls. With that out of the way, let's get started. First things first, you'll want to download and extract the emulator, and you'll want to have a text editing program like Notepad++. You'll find links to both down in the description, so be sure to grab them if you don't already have them. Once you've got them both, let's go ahead and open up the Xenia folder. By default, Xenia will write your saves and your config file to a folder in your documents. We can keep them in this directory with everything else instead by right-clicking and creating a new text document called portable.txt. You don't need to write anything in this document, just be sure its full name is portable.txt and not something like portable.txt.txt. With this file in place, a new folder called content will be generated in your Xenia directory when you save your game for the first time. You may never need to touch these files, but within this content folder, you'll find your game saves organized by game ID. The quickest way I found to match the game ID to a game is by searching the ID on the Xbox DB website, which is linked below. Once your portable.txt file is in place, go ahead and open up Xenia for the first time. Windows may flag the program as malware the first time you run it, but you can ignore this warning. Go ahead and close right out, and you should see a new file in your Xenia directory called xenia.config.toml. While most emulators have their settings accessible through a graphical interface, this file is where you'll be able to configure Xenia, so let's open it up with Notepad++. I recommend going through these options in more detail yourself, but I do want to highlight a few things in this file. Under the content header, you'll want to change this license mask if you're running any Xbox Live arcade games. If you're just using disc games, then you can skip right over this. Just below the content section, you'll find your Direct3D settings. If you're using an AMD card, you'll want to switch this EDRAM ROV line from true to false. If you're using an Nvidia card, you can change the resolution scale here. This only works with ROV enabled, so unfortunately, AMD users are out of luck. Setting the resolution scale to 1 will cause games to output in their native resolution, while setting it to 2 will double that. Continuing down to the GPU section, you can change the graphics API by modifying the GPU line. Vulkan is still very much a work in progress, so it's recommended that you stick with Direct3D. And the last thing I want to mention in this config file is the vSync setting. Enabling this will help eliminate screen tears, while disabling it will unlock the frame rate in some games. Note that this does not work in the Halo games, and it won't magically increase your frame rate if you're not already hitting the cap. So that will get you up and running, but eventually you'll probably want to update Xenia or try out other forks like the Canary. Updating and adding other forks of Xenia is very easy, all you need to do is download the latest version and copy over the extracted files into your Xenia directory, overwriting the old ones. So I think that just about covers it. From here you should be able to load up and play any compatible game. There are some extra steps to running some multi-DVD games, but I'll cover that in another video, so be sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.